Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Monday morning. It is uh, the fourth week after Easter. Yesterday was the fourth Sunday of Easter. And uh, today we get to dive back into our treasury of daily prayer again and uh, hear a confession about Jesus and to hear this account of Jesus uh, taking his disciples up onto the mountain to be transfigured. I hope that you are doing well. Um, I know that things are, are starting to change just a little bit in terms of uh, restrictions lightening up some. And so we are hopeful that that means that life may, um, what do you want to say, come back to some of a semblance of normalcy as we get to maybe interact a little bit more with each other as these things continue to change. So um, today, like I said, our, our reading is from the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 9. Now it happened that as he was praying alone, the disciples were with him, and he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But others say Elijah, and others, one of the prophets of old, has arisen. Then he asked them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter said, The Christ of God. And he strictly charged and commanded them, saying, To tell no one. He said, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes into his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Now about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he said he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were there were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake and saw his glory and the two men who stood with him, and as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid and entered the cloud. As a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. Today our writing is from an early church father, Cyril of Alexandria, who writes about this uh, transfiguration account. Christ goes up onto the mountaintop, taking with him three chosen disciples. He's transformed to such a surpassing and godlike brightness that his garments glitter with rays of fire and seem to flash like lightning. Moses and Elijah stand at Jesus' side and speak with one another about the departure of Jesus that he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem the mystery of the dispensation in the flesh and of his precious suffering on the cross. For it is true that the law of Moses and the word of the holy prophets foreshadowed the mystery of Christ by types and shadows, painting it, so to speak, as in a picture. Both the law and the prophets indicated that in due time Christ would appear in our likeness and for the salvation and life of us all, consent to suffer, and death, on the, suffer death on the tree, Moses and Elijah standing before Jesus and talking with one another is, therefore, a sort of representation. It excellently displays our Lord Jesus Christ as having the law and the prophets for his bodyguards, as being the Lord of the law and the prophets, and as being foreshadowed in them by those things in mutual agreement that they had proclaimed. For the words of the prophets are not at variance with the teaching of the law. And this, I imagine, is what Moses, the most priestly, and Elijah, the most distinguished of the prophets, were talking about with each other. Beside the wonderful sight of Christ's glory, something else was done that is useful and necessary for the confirmation of the disciples' faith in him, and not for the disciples only, but also for us. For a voice came from the cloud above, as from God the Father, saying, This is my Son, my Chosen One. Listen to him. And when he had, the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. 
Had it been God's will that they should follow the commandments of Moses, God would have said, I suppose, obey Moses, keep the law. But this was not what God the Father said. In the presence of Moses and the prophets, God commanded them rather to listen to Christ. The evangelists had clearly indicated that the truth should not be subverted by anyone who claims that the Father told them to listen to Moses and not Christ, the Savior, by saying, And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. When God the Father commanded the holy apostles from the cloud overhead, saying, Listen to him, Moses was far away. Elijah was no longer near. Christ was there alone. It was Christ, therefore, that God commanded them to obey. For Christ is the end of the law and the prophets. Such interesting thoughts there from Cyril about what the significance is of this transfiguration event and how there's this movement from Moses and the law and Elijah the prophets to Christ alone. And so anyone who would hold on to that former way before Christ is really missing the point of Jesus coming into the world. And so we can be confident that we are connected to Christ alone through our baptism and that we live in that life connected to Christ all the days of our lives. Um, Our hymn verse for today is from the hymn, O Wondrous Type, O Vision Fair, which is a good transfiguration hymn. Verse 2, With Moses and Elijah nigh, the incarnate Lord holds converse high, and from the cloud the Holy One bears record to the only Son. Let's pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King and on his glory, and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you always, and may you ever live in the peace that comes from him. Have a great day.